I want to welcome you back to Carving with Eric. This video series is going to concentrate on how to make a carving if you don't have a lot of power tools. Some time ago a fella in England got a hold of me and said, I love your videos, but I wonder if you can do this with just chisels, knives, and gouges. Uh, a guy was from England and he said most of us over here don't have power tools. And so we don't have a bandsaw to cut everything out. So the challenge was how do you take a block of wood and carve out of just a block of wood without any bandsaw, without any, any power to cut the blank out. I understand that. I, I imagine there's a lot of you out there who do not have access to a power bandsaw, access to a scroll saw, access to something so that you can go from here to here. I get it. And I want to do this video series to help you out because whether we do it with a power tool of some sort or we do it with something else, it's the same type of <clears throat> excuse me, it's the same type of movement, same type of removal process. In this process, I want to show you how to go from here to here. Now, the base is going to be pretty easy for you to figure out. But I want to get this carving series so that you can go from just a straight block of wood. How do we go from here? How do we create a drawing? How do we go from there to, to do a carving like this? And I've got several of them I'll show you here in a minute. But essentially, this is knowing exactly where the cuts are, where the wood removal process is, and where you can, you can do whatever you want to in terms of design. And so when we look at projects like this, or other projects that I'll show you here, you, you're not, you don't have to recreate the wheel to go from this to this. And I want to show you some shortcuts along the way. But let me take you a real quick tour. Here's a small one I cut out with a bandsaw, but it's just a real simple guy. And, and that's an easy flat plane project that you could do without a whole lot of fuss and without a whole lot of muss and without a whole lot of expensive tools. I get it. If you're just a part-time carver, you don't want to spend a lot of money on expensive tools. And even if you do have the money, you may not have the place. So let's, let's, let's figure out a way together to do that. Here's one I carved in a class with a friend of mine named Ryan Olson. Ryan just lives a couple towns over from me. We get together several times a year and hang out with each other. And we really enjoy each other's company, but he's a member of the CCA, and so he does a lot of little projects that he can teach around the country. And he's got a lot of these little guys, and this was a neat little guy carving. I like it a lot because I got a friend that kind of looks like this, and uh, it's, it's funny to compare them to when I have this one out and I have my friend come over. But as you can see, there's so many details on this and it's got his hands tucked into his pockets with his thumbs sticking out. And I thought that was just another added feature. Got flop over ears, got the big belly, got the vest on, but it's a great carving for this kind of attitude because you don't need much of a block. You don't need a power bandsaw or anything else to cut this out. You can do all of this strictly from a piece of wood and a, and, a, and, a, and a straight blank. You know, the the flat plane Scandinavian carvers have been doing that for a number of years because they've got a lot of these projects like this. Here's the, I guess this is the sea captain with his hat on. But this is, this is essentially the same thing that we're going to do because it comes out of a six inch block of wood. And even if you don't cut around it to get the shape out that you want with a power bandsaw, big chisels, or at least big tools, get you to this point as well. And so whether you're, everything here that you see fits in this, this is a two by two by six, or for my metric friends, it's five centimeter by five centimeter by 15 centimeter. And, and the one I'm gonna use is a little bit bigger. It's, it's gonna be about a six and a half that we'll use for this project. But here is a good example of project that doesn't need a lot of expensive tools sitting over in the corner of the shop. I mean, it's great if you have them, if you have a friend that has those and you want to cut them out and you want somebody to do that, it's great if you've got a friend that can do that. If not, let me show you how we can do these out of just the block of wood that we're using. 
And so one of the things we want to make sure that we're, we're taking care of is the drawing part. That's the hardest thing to do for most people. When you go to carve, it's really difficult for some people to translate an idea into a drawing that they can turn into a carving. I, I, I get that. I'm, I'm not the greatest artist in the world. You, you look at some people, they can sit down and they can bang that drawing out. They can carve it and know that from start A to point A to point B, they have done everything that they wanted to themselves. I, I, I get it. I, I'm not a big proponent for spending a lot of time drawing, but you don't have to. You can use something like this and all you're using is the basic shape and you're adding your own details to it. And, and, and essentially it may be copying someone feels that way, but not always. Here's uh, some resin figures that I picked up. They're kind of neat. I think they're only about four inches tall. If I were measuring them, I think they're something like four inches tall, yeah. And two inches wide. But there's a lot of detail in here for this, this resin piece of uh, art that someone made. You could add a lot of details into this, but you don't have to. And if you decide not to, it's something to use as a as a quick figure to look at. Get my hand out of the way. So you can see some of the features there that you could do, ears, nose, whatever. And you can draw the shape out as well. This guy's my favorite. I like the way his eyes scrunched up and he's got the happy look to his face. But he also says, don't mess with me because I've got cross bandoliers and uh, pistol on each hip. But anyway, he's, he's, a, he's a neat one to do. But you don't have to always use somebody else's drawing. I'll introduce you to my, my friend, Mr. Bojangles. If you've never seen one of these things, these are neat little tools and you can make them in different sizes. I don't know if you can still buy these. I imagine somebody still makes these, but these are bendable figures that I can bend into any configuration that I want. The leg stuck way back out here, running, um, arm. There's one arm, you'll have to worry about the head later. But these are great little figures that I've picked up from, from people that I know along the way and bought some. You can have them with uh, a boot, narrow, fat, skinny, long arms. I've made a couple of my own and I know people that have made their own as well. But these are wonderful little tools to help you figure out the shape of what you want to carve and you don't have to be a great artist and, and I imagine you can draw around these in whatever configuration you want whether running standing whatever kneeling perched on a fence fence whatever whatever you want to do and then it's easy on your computer or through the a local print shop to size that down if you've got an 8 inch piece of wood and this is 12 inches, size it down to, to 12, size it down to eight inches. That's easy enough to do. These are these things are, are not really hard to make if you decide to. Um, I made one out of cardboard just so I could cut it out of wood. And let me get these off to the side and I'll pull those out and show you. But I've made some out of just some stiff cardboard, stiff paper, like a manila folder or if you're frugal like me, you use cereal boxes because they're good thin cardboard to do that and you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment. But, but there's, there's what you have. You have a foot or a smaller foot. And you have an upper arm. I, I labeled these on the back. You have an upper arm and a lower leg and a torso and a lower arm and a hip and a mid torso and an upper leg and an upper leg and a torso. So again, out of this, I've got different configurations that I could use. I don't even have to put them together like the Bojangles. I could leave them together like this and say, there's my torso. This looks like a bandana coming off on the front and back. I've got an arm that would come off here or down. I've got a, I've got a hip placement or a mid torso that I can rotate around to make it look like he's got no butt or a big butt. I've got an upper leg and I've got a lower leg and you can see how quickly you can put something together like that if you wanted to and, and they're relatively easy to do. It, it takes a 
several minutes and it takes a, a little bit of time to cut them out but it's an ingenious little an ingenious little piece of equipment you can use for that there's the head that goes with it and if you want one with a cowboy head or a hat on the head then you'll have to improvise that a couple years ago my oldest son who is getting into art as well uh, found something called body cune and the body cune is a it's an asian uh construct by bandai bandai is a uh it makes a figure that you can use to rearrange in a lot of different configurations if you're like me and you i don't want I, i'd love to be able to draw this i'd love to sit down and without even thinking about it very much I see a lot of my students, they'll draw in between assignments or in between activities, and they'll sit here and they'll bang these things out, and they're very good at it. They've spent years doing that, and so have other artists. And so I, I really am not going to spend the time to become an artist like these people are. So you buy something like this, and it wasn't cheap, but boy, it comes in handy. And they come in different sizes. I think this one is the six inch. Uh, looks like it's a little over six inch, maybe. Yeah, with the arms extended at six inch with the just the head and the torso it's right around five and three quarter five and a half great little thing that you can bend in all kinds of different configurations and i've got a box over here that allows me to put things in the hands the arm doesn't want to stay together on that one but you can put things like a sword a shield have them sitting have them kneeling have them cross legs and all kinds of different there's the things that come with it all kinds of different pieces that will help you do a project like this. This is the kind of thing that I, I enjoy doing because this helps me get to the carving part, which is really what I want to do. I don't want to sit here for hours and hours and hours drawing. And I understand that people like Rich Weatherby and others will use clay and then they'll make the project. And I wish I had the time to do the clay. And maybe someday I will when I slow down a little bit. But I carve a lot and I sell a lot or give away a lot or demonstrate a lot or teach a lot. And so for me to go out and learn the fine art of using Sculpey or another kind of, of clay model and clay medium is going to be really hard for me to figure out where that time is going to go. If the time, you know, it's like a 24-hour clock. You've only got a, a certain amount of time. And so where, where do you put all that time into so I would love to, and maybe this summer or another summer, I will take the time to do that. But right now, what we're going to fo focus on is being able to draw right on here what we need. And I've got some patterns here that I'll load on my website. I'll put them here so you can take a snipping tool and you can, you can use those. But um, I'm going to try to keep these videos to right under 15 minutes. That way you're not bored with having to watch too much. And I'm not going too fast or too slow. I know I got 15 minutes and then we'll figure out the rest of it in the next video. But when we carve, what we want to do is be able to take what we know and turn it out of a block of wood. Whether that's with power, nothing wrong with that. I've got, I use a lot of power too. Or whether we're using just chisels. In this, all we're going to use are chisels, knives, and gouges. V-tools as well. And so everything's going to be done by hand with the exception of drilling through the legs to keep the legs and the symmetry proportional. I don't want anything to make me a little bit crooked on there. And so we'll take, a, a, that's the only power that we'll use other than cutting this out on the bandsaw, although you can buy two by two by six blocks or two by two by 12 from just about any supplier, a Heineke, eBay, whatever you want to do, Willick Woods and whatever. There are a lot of places in which you can do this. So let's concentrate on going from this to this. And I'll talk a little bit more about this cowboy next time we get to it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.